Right, so this video was requested by Red, not to be confused with these guys. Um, Red wants to know how to animate objects using PowerDirector. Specifically, he wants to know how to move a ball. So I went ahead and googled the transparent um, basketball image and downloaded it. I made that little example that you saw earlier. And if that's what you guys want, then stick around for the video. Okay, so here's what you need. You need the latest um, Power Director updates. I'm going to put a link in the description that will take you guys straight to the Play Store. If you see the update button, just tap update and it will update your Power Director app. Alright, so let's begin. Um, whenever you see this red cursor, just ignore the white dot. That's supposed to be my thumb because I'll be using this um, red cursor to show you some things to make this very beginner friendly. Alright, so I just imported this clip called um, Download 2. And now I'm going to uh, import the image of the ball. So to import the image of the ball, please do not use this icon, use this one instead. Because if you use this, the ball is going to be beside this main clip. So tap this and then look for the image of the ball. To search for images, just tap this icon up here. So this is the image of the ball right here. You tap it and then tap the plus button. And as you can see, it is under the main video, not um, beside it. So always make sure you tap this to create overlays. So we have the ball here and the video is behind the ball. So I'm just going to play it for you guys to see what it looks like without doing any form of editing. Alright, so that's just how it is without editing the video. I may be slow, but it's because I want this video to be very beginner friendly. So please, if you're if you're good with this, I don't even know why you're watching this video. Anyways, so the first thing to do is um, to match the length of this image of the ball to the length of the clip. So what I'm going to do now is just tap the image and then drag it. Now they are the same length. Next, I'll tap the image of the ball again and then reduce its size. So like this is okay. You can go lower if you want, but this is okay for me. Then I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. Uh, I think it should be a bit visible. Anyways, you can't drag it outside this frame. That's the whole video itself. Um, Power Director doesn't have that feature, which is why I prefer editing with Kinemaster. But you guys like Power Director tutorials, so that's why I'm doing this. With Kinemaster, you can take the ball out of the whole frame, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. You can't take it outside the whole frame, but it's okay being here, so don't worry about it. Now tap the clip of the image of the ball again, and then this icon down here that says transform keyframe is what you're going to tap next. So I'll tap it, and I want you to take note of just one thing for now. See where it says scale, we want to maintain the scale of the ball. The scale means how big or how small it is. You know initially when we had the ball here it was very big, but now it looks very small. So the scale is at um, 0.296. Positions X and Y do not matter right now, so don't worry about them. What we're going to do next is uh, start keyframing. So you see this icon over here where the red cursor is? This is the keyframe symbol, and I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to tap it now. And when I tapped it, you should have noticed that um, the yellow symbol appeared here. So I'm going to zoom in a bit, or not a bit, all the way in. I'm not sure you can see it, but this is the symbol right here. So this symbol means that um, we want to track the movement of the ball in this image. Now as you can see, the symbol is now yellow because this blue line is on it. And this means that uh, this point in the clip, we want the ball to be in this position, which is uh, this position right here. But as the video progresses, we want the ball to make its way all over to this place. So. What we can do, so I'm going to just zoom out a bit and then, oops, okay, I just zoomed out and now I'm going to start moving until the car appears, I'm just going through the clip, alright, so the car is up here, we tap the clip of the ball again, tap transform keyframe, and this time we're going to move the ball all the way to the car to create that illusion of an impact. So as you can see I had started moving the ball. This keyframe was automatically created. I didn't have to tap this myself but you can tap this to create a keyframe before moving the ball. 
what this essentially means is that um, at this point of the clip the ball should make its way all the way over here so I'm just going to play it for you guys to see right so that's the initial thing you have to do no worries I'm going to show you guys how to make the ball move all the way to the left like to give you the illusion that it was um, hit by the car if you like paying attention to detail then you should observe that the ball was not rolling or rotating and that's something most people will find weird if you are an animator and you don't uh, consider all those things so just tap the clip of the image again next tap transform keyframe right on this point where you have this keyframe the one that's yellow right now you can zoom in if you want to be precise this one that's yellow right now now we are going to have to rotate the ball and um, since the ball was moving forward not backwards then it has to rotate clockwise but if it was moving backward it should be anti-clockwise i want you guys to take note of the scale now it is 0 0.296 because when you start rotating the ball the scale is going to change this is like a defect of um, power director maybe hopefully in the future they're going to fix it with them um, updates so to rotate the ball just tap this icon right here and start um, moving your fingers around in the direction you want the rotation to be so just watch me doing it as you can see the scale is increasing and decreasing and so so i'm done rotating and you, as you can see the scale is now 3.24 we want it to be 0 0.296 i believe now you just have to use any of these dots these square icons to bring it back down Right, so as you can see it is now 0.296 and I adjusted the position a bit because I see that after zooming into the keyframe it's a bit far from the car so anyways now let's give it a play and see what happens. So you can see the ball was rolling, maybe it was rolling too fast, you can reduce the speed of the rotation if you want, but I'm just going to leave it that way for now. So right about here the dog... Uh, Right about here, the ball makes impact with the car, and now it has to move backwards to the left. So just tap the clip again, tap transform keyframe, and now tap the keyframe icon again. As you get better with keyframes, you're going to realize that this keyframe I just created isn't really necessary, but I just want to make this beginner friendly. So that's why I'm creating another keyframe. Normally it should be done with three keyframes, but um, this way you guys should be able to understand when I explain how everything works together. Right, so now you're saying this white keyframe and this yellow keyframe should keep the ball in this position. At this keyframe, the ball is here and it doesn't move between these keyframes. So this yellow keyframe also means that the ball is here. Now I want the ball to move from this, this position where it is all the way over here to the left. That means we're going to move forward. So let's say where the car actually, where well the front of the car is almost out of the frame and then we we'll move the ball out of the frame as well. So let's give it a play one more time. Okay, that was quite okay, but we want the ball to also rotate backwards as well. So we'll go back to that last keyframe we created, which is this one, and then rotate the ball backwards a couple of times. So I'm done rotating the ball backwards and uh, this time the scale is 2.94 but uh, you can readjust it to match the 2.96 which it was originally scaled at. But I don't want to waste any more time in this video because I think it's getting too long now. If we play it now, we're going to see that the ball is going to roll backwards. Let me just move it a bit forward where the impact actually happens. So that's it, the ball actually rotates backward. Finally, you can see the ball is still in the frame. If we want to be logical, the ball should be outside the frame. So, this is why I prefer KineMaster. You can take the ball outside the frame or the object outside the frame, but with Power Director, you won't be able to. And they did it just because they want you to be able to access the file or the clip. Because if it's out here, you won't be able to tap it on Power Director. But KineMaster, there's a way to bring it back into the frame. So, to fix this, just cut the clip, zoom in all the way in. Then cut the clip exactly where the car reaches the edge. Yeah, right here should be okay. Tap the clip, split it, and delete this part. So 
so it should be the final uh, animation for the whole video which is like 20 minutes for me it should be like 5 to 8 minutes for you right so that's how it works all right right i hope i'll be able to help you out with the animating using power director and everybody out there hopefully this video has helped you out as well and if it has please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please do if you have any questions concerning power director you can always ask me and if i can i'll make a video answering your question all right so happy editing and um, yeah bye bye